Welcome to another edition of Jacqueline of All Trades and today we are going to make a rainbow blush. This was original from a lady on Etsy. She created it herself and they're around $22. And right now the rainbow one is actually out of stock. So this one is the one that I did earlier and I want to show you my finger being swatched and this is what it looks like. Now, um, in order to make this, this um, blush, what we're gonna need is, we're gonna need some type of container, and I have a Nivea empty container that I bought at the dollar store. You could also use a candle light in which you take out the little candle out and then what you do is you trim the side to create a small one. That's where I did mine. Um, I found that this project takes a lot of pigment and getting it out of the pigment jars is a little bit cumbersome. So if you don't have a lot of patience, you can use the small tea light and then that's what this is. And then you just put in your pigments. Now the next thing that you're going to need is going to be some rose water, which I used in my previous tutorial for, um, which you will see linked at the end of this video. The next thing that you're going to need is some glycerin, and you can buy this at any Walgreens. Those are the only two items, the glycerin and the rose water that I have not bought at the dollar store. Now um, the dollar store sells loose pigment and this ones are for from LA color uh, this one is in color sunshine this one is called snow white this one is called grape jelly this one is called radiant and the pink one is called lollipop now two other sources of pigment also in the dollar store are the Maybelline color tattoo and this one is breaking bronze and this green one is called never fade jade so other things that you're going to need so we have containers the pigments we're going to need some paper towels or if you have some uh, tissues and I got mine um, also from the dollar store and I have the little uh, Spongebob ones, but also um, you can need a glass bowl and a plastic spoon. And it's important to get a spoon and not some other kind of um, wood stick because it's hard to blend in the pigments if not. And now lastly, what you're going to need are some Q-tips, which I also got on the dollar store. Some baby wipes. Those are always good. My favorite, Huggies, fragrance-free. And just these are some uh, optional things, a pair of scissors and some paper plates. And I will show you uh, what you're going to be doing with the paper plate. So you have a paper plate right here and what you're going to do is you're just going to cut a part of it and then this lip I would say will help you push around the pigment in the container but this is optional so without further ado what we're going to do is put two drops of glycerin one, ooh, too much. Okay, so it's one or two, all right? And you will see it's a little bit in there. Then you're going to take some rose water, and the same as the other previous um, DIY, you can use uh, blossom water, orange blossom water. Um, you could use an alcohol-free toner. You could also use distilled water. Um, but I like the smell of rose and I happen to have the rose water. So I'm going to just put a little bit in there Okay, so it's not a lot Okay, 
So now the next thing is we are going to mix in the pig pigment. And these ones are a little bit easier to use than the LA color ones, and I will show you why. So this one, all you do is you peel the seal on it, and you can just tap it, and the pigment comes out. So this will take a while for you to get enough pigment. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this for a while. Now I wanna show you the one um, you could theoretically mix two pigments, which I'm going to do today. So the one from LA Colors, it's a much sturdier container. Uh, you take the top off, then it has a little brush, which you don't need. And then it has an opening in there where the glitter comes through, but it's sealed. The only part that the glitter is coming through is the very, very end. I don't know if you can see that on camera. So I'm just, and this one takes a lot longer too. Um, to get enough so it's going to be and so the goal here is with your spoon is to create a paste and what's really great about a spoon is you can actually press the pigment against the side of the bowl now, a um, couple of things, if, if you are not familiar with making your own cosmetics, you want non-reactive materials, meaning nothing, you don't want anything that is metal. So the, the spoon is plastic, the bowl is, is glass, and everything else is anything but metal. So that's gonna be very important because you don't want any kind of reaction. And, and also you're gonna be putting this on your face, you want to stay healthy and and not have a, some sort of a reaction. So, now I, I wanna show you, see this looks actually pretty liquid. So what you wanna do is put additional pigment. And you wanna continue doing that until you get a, a paste. Um, what's really great about this particular pigment, pigments, whether it's LA Color or the Maybelline Tattoo, is that they have a luminosity to them so there's no need to like mix, let's say, a matte shadow and then add something with pearl, like a, like a highlighter. Um, this way it's all in one, so it kind of simplifies things a little bit. Additionally, we're not using any kind of um, alcohol because that tends to uh, make the skin more sensitive to the sun and it can stain your skin. So that's another reason why you want to stay away from uh, using alcohol to mix the pigments. So like a rose water would work, an orange blossom water. Um, you could use the still water or water that you boil and then you let it cool. That way it minimizes the bacterial amount in the water. And you're just really um, continuing to mix. And you see we're getting closer. This is more of a paste, but we really want um, an either, um, I'm sorry, uh, um, almost like a dough. So we need more. And so we're going to continue putting the, um, to make it a lighter mixture. So as you can see, um, when you buy the original one, you will see that it tends to be a smaller container. It's not like as big as some of the face powders that you may buy, let's say at the store or in the pharmacy, like a place like Walgreens or Target. And the reason is because this really takes a lot of pigment. And so, um, you know, I gave you two choices of, um, of containers, you know, something like the Nivea container, which is actually pretty big, or the tea light, which is smaller. So you could actually, here, let me just show you how to pull the little tea light out. Okay, the lip on the tea lights. Okay, here it goes. So you pull that out, and then you end up with a little metal container. Um, and then with a pair of scissors, you can then just trim it and make it very small. 
So you see, I'm just um, doing that for you. And then that way you end up with a pretty thin metal container. If you happen to have empty makeup containers at home, like shadows, containers, that would work too. But these are just different ways of doing it. So um, this is still pretty liquidy. So, but the reason why I use um, glycerin, I wanted to, to mention that, is because we need some kind of, uh, of uh, product that's going to help the powder, once it's dry, stay together. That way you don't have fallout when you're using it. And the glycerin is doing that. And now rose water is because we need a little bit of liquid and I actually like the smell of it. So, okay. So we're still having this is almost like a cream consistency. We're going to continue adding. And as you can see, I've used quite a bit of pigment and it's still not quite right. So it's gonna be a while until uh, we get the right consistency. So this is something that really is a labor of love. It takes, it takes time. And as always, you, you wanna wash your hands. You wanna make sure all your instruments are clean before you go ahead and start. Alrighty. So that's a little bit better. And so what you'll see is you see there's kind of like a soft peak. So you could at this point put it in a container. And so what I'm going to do with the help of um, Q-tip I'm just going to clean the spoon. And what's interesting about a Q-tip is actually it absorbs some of the, mo the moisture. So you end up, and I'm going to use my little tea light one, you end up with a pretty um, a drier product because the moisture is absorbed by the cotton tip. Okay. So here I'm just putting all the, the pigment, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we are going to clean. I also have a little uh, trash can here. I'm gonna put my used um, things and you can use this is a, a, a wet towel, and I'm just gonna do this to clean my utensil before I go and do another color. And so by doing this, it, you just make sure that you're actually ready to do this process and don't need to get up every few minutes to get another item. So once the bowl is clean, what you can do is then just use a paper towel to make sure that it's dry also. You don't want any residue. And you want to dry your spoon also. And we will start with another pigment. And so we're going to use, again, you can either do the pigment first and then the liquid, or you could do the liquid first and then the pigment. It's really up to you. I'm just going to put additional pigment here. And what's really great about this is that you choose the pigments that you want. So if you feel that you wouldn't necessarily uh, would like violet on your face, which a lot of the times comes across as a bruise. And you can see here in my, um, my hand, the purple there. Um, but, uh, you know, so you can just do like a bronzer and different kinds of bronzers, like a, like a gradient. It's really up to you what you want to do. And again, we use a little bit of um, I would say two drops of glycerin. One, two. And then 
and and there isn't really a lot, but I guess if you could count but the drops, I would say uh, you could do three or four drops of um, the rose water. And so you can get a dropper, yeah, that's way too much, but you can get a dropper um, at most pharmacies. They would actually give it to you for free. So anyway, I just want to show you how we mix this in. And what's interesting is, and, and I've noticed this when I, when I did my own, um, the test run, was that for whatever reason, this particular uh, shade in Radiant, and also I see here in Maybelline, um, the bronze shade, which was the, uh, ne um, no, it's not, uh, what is it? Right here, Breaking Bronze. There's something, there must be something in the bronze color that it just makes the pigment harder to mix. So you actually end up with um, less wet product. It doesn't quite, um, it doesn't quite mix as well as some of the other pigments. So actually that works to our advantage because by not making such a wet uh, mixture, the water kind of separates. You see, this is the water and these are the pigments. It actually uh, would take less time to dry. So I'm just going to, again, put this next to the green one that we made earlier. And you will see that it seems like it's not 100% blended. But then all you do with a Q-tip is you just kind of push it. And basically the reason why you're getting it blended is because you just want a way of putting the different uh, pigments next to each other. So I'm just gonna show you, you see how it looks kind of dirty? So with an, a clean Q-tip, you could just really, really push it in. Now the other possibility is with this lips that we made out of uh, paper towel, you can kind of push it to the way you want it. I don't know if you can see, I might probably, I'm not here. Let's see if you can see that. And you're just kind of, uh, creating the two different colors. And so you continue like that until you have all the different colors. Now, once you're done, what you want to do is you have them all packed, and I'm just gonna show you on the one that I have finished here. Um, here, I'm just going to get rid of all the excess. Oops. I'm gonna have a clean surface to show you what I mean. So um, once you have the different pigments, what you want to do is with this paper tissue or it could be paper towels, you just press on it and you need a surface that will press on it evenly. And then when you do that, the moisture will end up on the tissue. And then once you do that, you do it a couple of times and then you let it dry for 24 hours. And then you have your little rainbow blush and again you can make it any color you want to these are the ones that i made because those are the ones that i got at um, dollar tree but you can come up with any of uh, any color and do an exact one like they have in um uh the lady um that would make them and again you want to What's really great about adding the little bit of glycerin here is that, um, and when I mean exact one, I'm sorry for jumping all over the place, when I mean getting the exact one, I mean the exact same or, or similar colors, it's not going to be the same thing because it's not, the person who makes it is not the same as the, the, the person who came up with this, but you know, it's an alternative. I can tell you that except for the rose water and the glycerin that I happen to have laying around. And I just want to show you my finger. Um, 
um, the the this whole thing was a uh, dollar for each pigment and then a dollar for the Nibia that now is empty and then some q-tips a dollar and some of this uh, tissues which is a dollar so I think you can create this uh, pretty at a pretty decent price I would say less than ten dollars buying the uh, glycerin from like a place like Walgreens or CVS or Target and then rose water that costs more but um, again you could use distilled water and again I just want to show you how it's swatched and the final product now if you really wanted to you could um, affix this to the bottom of the container and then just have the lid on it and carry it with you um, but yeah basically you could use the 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 whole container you could use the container of Nibia but just to let you know I mean it uses a tremendous amount of pigment so you might need like two or three just to create one color so anyway I hope you enjoy this and uh, let me know how it turns out for you if you have any ideas on how it could be made better I'm, I'm love to hear from you and also let me know if there's something else that you're interested in Alrighty, thank you so much. We'll see you the next time.